Welcome to Bonehead. This week, Christmas? Meh. Meh. Let's do Arbor Day movies. So, oh my go. God, Arbor Day movies. Uh, 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 what's that one with the yellow Danny DeVito? Oh, the I was oh. actually just thinking of Groot. Oh, Groot, Groot's Groot's the one. Groot's, I mean, because oh Arbor Day is in a tree, right? Well, you Can know, we pitch to Disney Plus a very Groot Arbor Day. <laughs> it will be the Star Wars holiday special of the Marvel Universe, and we'll write it. Yeah, I would. You write. know, technically, isn't isn't Captain Planet one long Arbor Day? I don't know. I doubt See, that Groot I've ever has to go seen back. So to Captain Planet, Groot has to go back to his home planet. But you used for to have his haircut. Day. That's true. And so he's got to go back for Seedling Day. But it turns out that the evil fire <laughs> monsters are going to invade. And see, of course, Groot being a tree. I uh, like the Seedling Day. Let's think of something yeah. better. Than I'm sorry. Planet. I just got I just got the vision of Don Cheadle in blue makeup as Captain Planet yelling <laughs> at the people saying, "I'm going to turn you into a fucking tree." <laughs> Oh my God! Can we do a Groot Captain Planet team up? Now one of them's owned by Ted Turner, right? Uh, yes, it's Groot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we're doing a Christmas episode, but we're doing something a little bit different. I know Christmas episode, right? Uh, and you know, we've kind of we've already kind of this is gonna be our second Christmas episode because our previous our other episode would have been where we talked about what we want from you know just our you know wish present wish list for Christmas. Yeah, that's true, so, but. This and one, plus, we did do a cameo. Of, uh, shout out to Glenn and and Good Movie Monday. Monday. Did I get it right? Woo-hoo. Uh Anyway, no. Uh, I was like, we're, did, we're, I thought you meant we did a cameo video. I'm like, who's calling us wanting to wish their people happy birthday? Well, we pay them. We'll do it for the right amount of money. We uh, pay them. Seven cents. We pay them. But anyway, yeah. So it, just cross promotion here. If you haven't seen that episode yet, you will notice us and other people. And some of them are more talented than they than we are. Then Guess they who are. it is? <laughs> some of them are well, more talented than they are would be a really tough sell. So See, we were, because they are them. So we've talked about Christmas yeah, movies yeah. before, but there's a ton of Christmas TV specials and specials that have come on <clears throat> for years and years and years and years. And we were thinking, wouldn't it be cool if we talked about some of our favorite Christmas specials, some of the weirdest ones? And I got two good ones. Oh, I've got I've got one that literally because I sat down and I wanted I, to watch. I bet James wins this one. I Probably. sat down to watch a couple and I was like, man, I'm not sure how this got made. But one of them, I literally was saying there, maybe what I start with because as I was watching and I was like, I would have loved loved to have been in the pitch for this. So anyway. So what we're going to do is talk about some of our favorites and some of our weird ones. And actually, one of the weird, one of my weird ones is something I really do like. So James, do you want to start with your weird weird one? Go ahead. I do, I do, because Joe, what says Christmas to you? Seriously, what what is something that if you're if you're thinking about a Christmas special, what's going to be something you expect to see in that that episode? What am I show? expect to see in that episode or of, of a Christmas special? I you know I like snow. Okay. Christmas uh, no. tree light. I love Christmas lights. I love Christmas lights, James. I may be snow and Christmas lights in it. There may be a few in the background. Chad, what about you? What do you look for? in a holiday special usually um his santa some some underprivileged kid who you know gets their christmas dreams a cocked loaded pistol oh okay what chad you're a little bit closer the correct answer because you are right about an underprivileged child but the correct answer should have also of course been the classic christmas symbol of a briefcase with two severed legs in it that's that's (laughs) what the hell that's not any of y'all's Christmas specials? No, that's no, not... no. Mine's a downer, but it's not that big of a downer. Okay, well, I mean, so well, none, of you are, uh, none of you were big fans of a Christmas special that was produced by Francis Ford Coppola? No. What? Okay. No. Okay, well, um, okay, well, let's, let's, let's sit back before I give this away. Who would you think about, when you think about a Christmas special, Who would who's a famous narrator you think of that could narrate a Christmas special? Bing Crosby. Ben Crowley, that's a good one, but he didn't do this one for some reason. I, think I he didn't think he time. did. But uh, Chad, any famous Burl Ives as comes to mind for some people, but yeah, Burl uh, the Jimmy Durante. Okay, well that's once again close, but no, this is narrated by William S. Burroughs. <laughs> it's a classic. <laughs> tell, them, tell our audience who William S. Burroughs is. William S. Burroughs was it that lunch was an author. Uh, the film Naked Lunch is is a William S. Burroughs. William S. Burroughs narrates and appears in this, actually. He's not claymation. Matter of fact, he's the only part that's not done in claymation. 
It's a classic Clay- Claymation Christmas special. It came out in 1993, directed by Nick Donkin and Melody McDaniel, who did music videos, and they've they've done Donkin, stuff since. They've got a completely different lineup, James. <laughs> oh, obscure but fun. Uh, so the story is wrote in 1989, and the animated uh, claymation special came out in 1993. And I'm ca- talking about the classic Christmas story, The Junkies Christmas. Now, The Junkies Christmas, it's the story of Danny the Car Whopper. He is a drug addict who cleans people's windows on the side of the road. And, and you know, at, at most classic Christmas specials begin. He's getting out of prison or jail after being held on a 72 hour hold for being picked up for being passed out in the street. Yeah, classic Christmas stuff. Anyway, Danny, the, the, the car wiper, is being released and he's, he's having withdrawals. He's having the shakes and all that stuff. And, and he decides he just needs one hit of heroin to make his Christmas complete because it's, you know, Christmas morning he's been released and, and he's trying to go out and do that. And so he decides he's going to rob rob a car, but it turns out the car it belongs to somebody that's from the south, and they threaten him for getting near their car because they see him through the window. So he runs off. Yeah, again, all these classic Christmas tropes. Uh, anyway, he uh, he ends up um, finding uh, a briefcase, which, as I alluded to earlier, is of course filled with a classic Christmas symbol of two severed legs. When he steals the briefcase, he doesn't know what's in it. He just hopes he can pawn the briefcase, make a little money. But he finds two severed legs. Uh, so he dumps those and then still goes to pawn the briefcase, finds some guy that will give him $3 for the briefcase. And uh, he goes, he finds a doctor that's drunk and convinces him to give his, uh, and or well, the guy he pawns the thing to says, by the way, you're not going to be able to buy heroin. The heroin guy got picked up. This is classic. classic Christmas trope, right? Your drug dealer is arrested. So anyway, he has to go and find a Christmas score. Well, he finds a doctor that will, who is drunk and he says that he's having facial pain. So the doctor, while intoxicated, gives him a little bit of morphine and it's a pill of morphine to dissolve and inject and he he needs a place to do this safely as one can imagine so he goes to a, a place where he can rent a room cheaply and he takes the money he got from pawning the briefcase and he's in the room and he's getting ready to he puts the morphine he fixes it up he gets ready to off when all of a sudden he hears screams of suffering from down the hall in this flop house kind of place and he goes and it's a kid and the kid is um, in severe pain and the kid can't get treatment because every time he tries to call a doctor, they say they think he's just a drug addict because he just wants them to come give him drugs. So they ignore this kid's cries for help. Well, Danny, the car wiper, takes his morphine and gives it to the kid because the kid's having severe kidney stones and can't get help. And that's the Christmas miracle that Danny experiences. He realizes he has to give his drugs to somebody who actually needs them. And then he goes back to his room. And he, and he feels the warmth of real Christmas, and it replaces the need for uh, heroin, at least for the evening. The, the William S. Burroughs, not shockingly to many people, doesn't end it overly upbeat, but he at least says that he experiences one minute of true human warmth. What you can watch this. this on? You can watch this on YouTube, and it is available on DVD. In an yeah, and if you, if you look at some of the visuals of this animation, it is creepy as hell. I watched the entire thing just to make sure I didn't misremember anything. Do they all have the bug eyes? Yeah, well, he, and by the way, if you watch the full thing, his gets worse as it goes on because he's going through withdrawal. Jesus. And he's sweating. There's there's entire scenes where it shows him sweating so bad. It, it is a really weird Christmas special. It is probably the weirdest Christmas special I've ever seen. At the same time, and where it does this carry? What, uh, it actually, I think VH1 is the people who agreed to air it. Oh uh, as far God. as network, a, a, a cable network. Today. Right in between episodes of Pop Out Video. Yeah. <laughs> William S. Burroughs. And if we ran out of William program S. Burroughs hosted it. Pop Up Video. <laughs> you will notice that Duran Duran is wearing sweaters. It is pointless for we all approach death the same. <laughs> anyway. Um, What's the name of it again? <laughs> a junkie the Junkies Christ- Christmas. A junkies Christmas. Mm. It is. But at the same time, and I said... It, it is dark. It is bleak. There's no reason it should exist. I mean, you should... William S. Burroughs tells a very real kind of Christmas story that, hey, junkies have Christmas too. That being said, you can watch it. It is available on YouTube. Many people have posted it. I, I assume it's in public domain. I don't want to advertise anything that's illegal to watch. But it is available on DVD as well in a collection of different uh, animated rarities. William S. Burroughs does open it 
and he, he narrates the entire thing. So if you are, if you've ever wondered what William S. Burroughs sounds like in, in narrating a claymation special, check it out. But guys, if you know of anyone weirder, I wait with bated breath because this was classic claymation and there's nothing odder to me than the junkies Christmas. Mine's not weirder, but it's slightly more depressing. Huh. Okay, so, I, I, I wait. I wait. Do it to it. Picture. <laughs> I, I just don't see how this could be more depressing than that. Girls dying of leukemia. So she's about nine. So oh, there I, I we think go. I know this one. I we, think I know this one. Yeah, you should know this one. She used to know us. So yeah, you tune into the NBC there in 1987, 88, and you want to watch your favorite little three foot alien from Mel Mac. Oh, it's the oh, Christmas special. Mac and me. That's right. And it's the Christmas special. And you think, ah, oh, Alf, he sure does make me laugh. Let me take a drink, folks. Not for this Christmas special where little Tiffany is dying and she doesn't really get a reprieve. But she thinks she's alone now, right? Ah. Well, she was when they put her in that casket. <laughs> well, the Didn't whole time say? I was rewatching. Oh, my God, James. That's true. Well, she was kind of cold. So cold. Oh. So cold and so dark. <laughs> Once again. A story nobody else is going to know, but you feel awful cold. Let me get you black. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> We're good, James. So, yeah, yeah, she's dead. So, what I just, I was I, I was curious of the history of this. And Paul Fusco, who was the creator of ALF, and actually did ALF, gives the history of it. What happened was, is he was doing a lot of these Make-A-Wish, because if you got to remember, 86, 87, 88, ALF was huge. Oh, multiple, multiple cartoon series. Cartoon series. He was huge. So it stands to reason that he was doing a lot of Make-A-Wish stuff. And one little girl struck him, and Brandon Tartikoff, who was over NBC at the time, said, oh, let's make a Christmas special with Tiffany. Not with her, because I'm not going to make that joke. But anyway, they named the girl Tiffany, and it was in her honor. So Alf and the Tanners go out to a cabin in the woods. And, and then they wake up the evil dead. But after that, he escapes, accidentally gets caught up in this truck. Play. Um, let me look up the character actor's name. I am so sorry. I had this all pulled up a second. Anyway, he gets in somebody's truck, and he's whisked away. It's played by Cleavon Little. And they're staying at Cleavon Little. Cleavon Little's. Little, of course, of he, Blazing's happening. His, yes, if Blazing Saddles, who's playing a guy 30 years older than he really is. By the way, his name was George Foley in that. And George Foley's dad, or his wife's dad, so he's suicidal. Alf, he's giving away his last uh, toys. He does it every year to the kids who are sick in the hospital. He ends up giving Alf to this little girl who's dying. They didn't say what she was dying of, but you find out later in the so Alf Caesar gets out of the out of it, ends up, and this makes no sense in the middle of it. I guess they had to fill 45 minutes because it was a two-parter. He ends up in the elevator with a pregnant lady accidentally, and the elevator breaks down. He ends up having to help the pregnant lady give birth. Actually, out of all these things, I haven't even got to the suicide yet. Out of all these <laughs> things, that seems the oddest to me. But I, I digress. He finds out that, oh, that little girl Tiffany's dying. So he goes back and hangs out with her in her room a little longer. Finally leaves, gets back into the truck with Cleavon Little, who's playing this guy named George Foley, who's suicidal because his wife's dead, pulls onto a bridge and decides to jump. And I'm telling you, at 8 p.m. in your local station, when you want to watch an ALF episode, you've got a dying girl of leukemia. You've got ALF giving birth to or ALF helping a woman give birth in the elevator and a guy trying to commit suicide. I'm curious, why did this not get stopped anywhere in development? Well, you know, but I mean, it's, it's, it was also... It was a hit show. They, they said they could probably do whatever they wanted. Well, and Brandon well, Tartikoff was the president of NBC. That's actually the reason probably it wasn't stopped anywhere in development. And I, this actually, I, I told you all this to talk about the 80s and how we always talk about how the 80s, Tarantino says the 80s has, is the least interesting of any decade when it comes to art. I don't know that I totally agree with that, but it's probably because of my age. However... All those 80s sitcoms had at least one or two tough episodes. 
Well, as I say, like and, and whether it dealt mean, with someone having an affair, someone lost a kid, and you all know what I'm talking about, like family ties. All people, of these had at least one episode that was like, hey. well, and, and people made fun of it because oh, well, let's, let's talk they, about all the ones on different strokes. Well, yeah, I would say, I'm and sure. Blossom became famous for you know the line next week on a very special Blossom because right. they did so many about. But you're right because I mean, even Mr. Belvedere did an entire episode. Of Mr. Belvedere. Uh, one of my favorite shows growing up. But, you know, uh, he's an English butler and he has to deal with Bob Euchre. Ah, hilarity. And then they did do a random episode where the kid goes away to camp and is touched inappropriately. Like, oh, my God, really? They did that on Belvedere? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, if, if I'm not mistaken, he goes away to camp and, and one of the camp counselors. And by the way, this is 1980s TV. So, of course, most of it was implied. Like, the only thing I ever showed was he just kept giving him massages on his back. <laughs> like, But... You know, it was the, but, but in all honesty, I think you're right. I think that in some ways we, we have where there is more options, where, where there are more options now for what you can watch. Like you can set your kid down in front of Nick Jr. or Disney Jr. or blah, 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 whatever. And, and they're not going to deal with any of that. But back when you only had three channels, if you wanted to tug on somebody's heartstrings or warn somebody about yeah. whatever or, you, and you wanted to work it into a sitcom, you were going to have one of those on a very, very special, special episode. Yeah, it just, I rewatched it today before we did the episode. It's the only thing I really got to rewatch. And you can find it all on Amazon, all the seasons of ALF. I am an ALF fan. I have a bunch of ALF stuff. I also realize now that ALF probably isn't as good as I remember. And that's true of almost anything from our childhood. But I got to go back to Belvedere. I just watched Call Me By Your Name. I finally got to watch it in the last two or three days. That's about the two guys, and one of them's coming of age and has an affair with Army Hammer. And that was that Belvedere sounds way worse. <laughs> I did, for I, me with the massage. <laughs> I did. I, I love it. I'll tell you what. Let me. Oh, actually, wait, I'll I highly recommend second. Call Me By Your Name. It's a really good movie. I, I I will give a, a second while Chad does his. I'll make sure I'm not misremembering. No, it's okay. Um, I didn't mean to get off subject. I just belvedere i didn't watch belvedere growing up. i doubt if i've ever watched one episode of belvedere oh i loved it when i was a kid I, well and i never got to see it live i saw it on reruns on fox back when the uh, a local fox affiliate literally showed nothing but reruns oh, james thought when they said shot live in front of a studio audience he thought that the studio audience was us <laughs> don't tell him like me and you yeah like us <laughs> watch it never mind uh you know if we're talking about weird I'm, I'm well i'm kind of depressed because uh one that I, and i didn't know this till today that one of the fondest ones i have memories of actually appears on several lists as being one of the odd uh ones uh christmas specials i wonder if it's my second one because my second one's on a bunch of lists I, I don't know if it is but i'm gonna go i'm gonna talk about a tv special it's nowhere as near as depressing as your two but it is slightly depressing if you think of the overall arc uh, I want to talk about Married with Children. <laughs> I don't, I know. So uh, one of their Christmas episodes, uh, they did a play on It's a Wonderful Life. And Al couldn't take it anymore. And he was going to commit suicide. And his angel comes down. And his angel is played by Sam Kinison. Yeah. And Sam Kinison's like, no, no, don't do that. Things would be so much better if you, things would be so much worse if you weren't born. And he t proceeds to show him what life would be like if he wasn't born. And everything is better for everyone. <laughs> his wife is happy. His kids who look exactly the same from a different father. Let's not talk about that aspect of it. But they're well off and great and everything's great for them. And at, by the end of the episode, Sam Kennison's just befuddled. He's tried everything to show Al that he should exist. And he's going off on a typical Sam Kennison rant. And Al goes, oh, no, you put me back. <laughs> I'm going to make them as miserable as I am. <laughs> that, that gets me right in the, the to quote Dennis Leary, that gets me somewhere in the cockles or subcockle region. So rather than be happy that, oh, his family is actually going to be well off. No, no, screw those people. I am going to make them miserable for the rest of their life. Put me back in. <laughs> And I think out of everything, that is way darker than the alternative. <laughs> that just shows Al is a truly horrible person. 
So yeah, it's you not. Know, that's as, a, that's one of the things that people always ask, though, right? What if it would have been better without George Bailey? So I mean, Married with Children did it. I yeah. think we do that movie and put it in a Sharknado universe, James, and sell that to Asylum now. Oh no, no, no! We need to do it from the so James Joe. The would, would, the Joe move, would the world have been worse if it had not had Sharknado? Joe cut me out of this movie deal, so it's just you two. Go ahead. No, no that's I, fine. But it was nope, because nope, he it's been always said. talks about selling a script. <laughs> By the way, asylum. speaking of selling a script, real quick, I want to confirm I'm not crazy. <laughs> Let me quote this. This is from the Retroist, who catalogs retro films and new and television. In season four, episode nine, The Counselor, Wesley goes off to summer camp as it, and is inappropriately cut, uh, touched by assistant camp counselor Perry. Will Wesley stop this pervert before he strikes again? <laughs> Will. Sorry. Will Mr. Belvedere be invited to go golfing with George again? That was Bob Euchre's character. Uh, that, this right, is not there's molest- nowhere near as molestation bad as- episode. They inserted an awkward golfing subplot. This is nowhere near as bad. Oh my god, I think that was a Christmas episode too of Different Strokes where the kid got kidnapped. Is that the bicycle episode? Because that's the mentalist. No, the bicycle the episode pedo. is the pedo episode. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember any of those. All I could remember, which is funny because I later got my tonsils out, was the episode where he got his tonsils out. Tonsils out. Him and Mr. Yeah. Drummond. No, there was a, I think I, I, I need to go back and look and see if this was a Christmas episode, but there was an episode where he was kind of like, oh, different strokes is on the downside, so we're going to put a ginger in to increase ratings. That, you know, that old Jim. I, yeah, I was kind of curious how many seasons. I'm sure Different Strokes ran at least seven seasons. How many seasons did Mr. Belvedere run? I think it was six or seven. Hmm. I've uh, never seen an episode. I've I've I've, I've talked in uh, a few episodes about the episode that I've seen, so I won't repeat it here. But no, that I think it was a Christmas episode where they kidnapped the ginger kid because their son's dead, and they're trying to celebrate Christmas with him. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, it's a very w- different strokes was a weird. That was it actually, went- it, it was not a Christmas episode. It oh, aired okay. December 5th, uh, but uh, I'm September 5th. Sorry. Drummond and Maggie begin an rescue Sam from uh, their captors, a grief stricken mother and father through a variety of methods, some of which backfire. Shocking. Hmm. Uh, meanwhile, Don goes to great lengths to hide from his own family. The fact that he kidnapped Sam. The seven-year-old Sam uses intuition and instincts to rescue himself. Stupid ginger. All right, so let's get back on Christmas. So, all right, what are we talking about now? Are we talking about our our, our favorites? Well, uh, we can talk about favorites. I've got another weird one. I think I've got another, you want me to hit another weird one? Yeah, you do. Yeah, are you going to? This, this one's one not as depressing. Talk? not as depressing it's are you sure because you're all too your both of your alls was well chad you said can you beat that and i said let me give you a nine-year-old with leukemia <laughs> the amount of times joe lewis has beat a nine-year-old with leukemia yeah, i tell you um you gotta no, keep no your I, i'll start i'll do another weird one that a lot of people have forgot so a lot of people know banking and uh, ranking and bass I ranking and bass oh ranking james and bass. son of a bitch um uh you know, the, the classic, once again, classic holiday tropes. I fall for them every time. The little people that are, uh, they're, they're involved with Santa. Um, leprechauns. Oh, oh leprechauns. that one. That one. The leprechauns Christmas gold. Now, you can't help but think of leprechauns when you think of Christmas. And what other job goes with Christmas than, you know, if you think about, oh, we're going to do a Christmas special. Where can we set this? <laughs> we we want to use leprechauns because people think leprechauns and they think christmas where can we possibly set this special have you actually seen this yes okay i watched it actually two days ago oh man i was like what anyway uh so here's the let me sum up the plot because what you have to you've got leprechauns joe which automatically you're like christmas we don't need anything else but what else do you need at christmas what job makes you automatically go oh they're going to be busy on christmas alligator wranglers sailors sailors are busy on christmas well-known holiday trope of sailors and what do sailors need on their boat at christmas time alligator they need wranglers a christmas tree joe you can't be out on the high seas without a christmas tree so that tells the story of a simple uh sailor named D- denty doyle and denty doyle is sent by the crew they drop him off on this what they think is an abandoned isle island and tell him please denty go get us a christmas tree 
unfortunately and as, get us as a as nice you know, stew while you're at it <laughs> as as you know christmas trees on this island which by the way the island is completely popular about leprechauns leprechauns are well known to be on tropical island yeah so anyway they go and he goes to get this christmas tree well of course as you know christmas trees are most famous for being used to maintain banshees like if you put a christmas tree in the ground it innately hides banshees i don't know if you know that but it's a well-known christmas fact is this going to go anywhere (laughs) watch the show joe it doesn't but i watched it anyway well, Denty accidentally digs up the Christmas tree. Jesus, don't tell the whole plot. Can't they get this from holds, IMDb? That holds the worst banshee of all, which you know is the classic character of Old Mag the Hag. <laughs> alligator Wrangler. And then, see, you could have made an Alligator Wrangler's Christmas if you were back talking to Rankin and Bass in the 80s. Can I this pause came out in 1981. One anyway. Second. One pause, one pause. Rankin and Bass, they were geniuses. They, they had a huge influence on entertainment for many years. I spent a weekend after my kid, I, we spent one, Freeform was doing all of them. And you don't, you forget how shitty some of those Rankin and Bass stuff is, things are. That, they're not all winners, say. folks. They're not all winners. And some of them don't hold up and they're just God awful. They're not it all is Rudolph. another. It's, it's one of the Rankin and Bass stop motion animated special, and it literally comes down to the sailor teaming up with the leprechauns <laughs> to imprison again the banshee that was trapped by the Christmas tree. I, I, by the way, this was the ghost, second to like the last. There was one more ghost. after this, and I don't know if that's the one Chad may talk about, but there was one more stop motion uh, Rankin and Bass. This was the second to the last one. It was 1981 when it came out. It has, uh, and again, one thing that Rankin and Bass did pretty well was get a cast together. Yep. And speaking of which, it has a cast. Art Carney, Peggy Cass, and of course, my favorite, Bob Snarf McFadden, known most for playing Snarf in Thundercats. It's Snarf. Snarf. Anyway, not to be confused with Narf, which uh, Pinky and the Brain. Yeah. Anyway, but Leprechaun's Christmas Skull, if you get a chance to see it, don't. But if you have to, go ahead. It, you you probably should see it because it's just one of those things where you can honestly tell they're like, well, we've done so many of these. We've done a year without a Santa Claus. We've done this. We've done this. We've done this. We've done the Rudolph. We've done. We have to do something to fill time, and they were paying us for another Christmas special. Let's have leprechauns involved, and we can just re-air it on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, the leprechauns Christmas gold. I think it was 1981. If you've never seen it. Watch a junkie's Christmas so you can cheer up with the leprechaun's Christmas gold because that's the only way this is going to seem like a good idea. <laughs> well, here's one that came out in '85 that I want your 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 help on because I had never seen it till about three years ago. And oh God, here we go. What? No, go ahead. Well, I need your help because no, I'd no, never... you you go for, go. And I want to see if we're, if we're talking about the same I one can't there. remember the plot of just how exactly did He-Man and She-Ra celebrate Christmas oh. in 1985. No, that's, I, I, that, I is complete, that, that is completely different. Uh, something else came in 19... What I'm going to talk about next came I out in 1985. Yeah. And by the way, yeah. it's on several lists of crappy or at least weird Christmas specials. It's weird. I don't remember. I'd, I, I I'd never seen it as a kid, Chad. I have no recollection of seeing this as a child. But I watched it a few years ago, and now, three years later, I still can't tell you what I watched. I don't remember the plot. I, I don't can't. remember a damn thing about it. Go for it, James, because I don't remember anything about here, it either. Here, let me do this. All and, I remember is all the characters have, like, Moss Man wearing a, a Christmas hat. That's and you can all watch I remember. it on YouTube for free, by the way, gentlemen. Yeah. I just, I, 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 I just, I, it's 45 minutes. What is it? It's 45 minutes. Yeah, no, here, here's a loose plot that I remember. Two kids from Earth somehow. That's right. Are, are going to be they're, they're going to challenge the evil in the future and who's Hordak and Skeletor's boss I think this may be one of the few King times Hiss? he appears uh, I don't know that it's King Hiss is it it's that, not like King that evil spirit thing right yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and he sends both of them he says listen it's going to take both of y'all because She-Ra for some reason is Shit, visiting now I want to watch <laughs> He's, She-Ra is visiting He-Man even though they were dimensionally separated or whatever but anyway evidently yeah. she gets free pass for Christmas she comes over to visit He-Man for Christmas since they're, you know, uh, brother and sister or whatever. And still having sex. And they... <laughs> Did you blame them? Well, I, if you follow uh, Bonehead Weekly at Pornhub, 
<laughs> it's a very different show and we're it's not a very different show but it, it gets less clicks than this actually it's kind of sad keep going <laughs> but anyway um yeah no the, so the, there's two kids and what it's famous for is hordak doesn't break and Skeletor at one point managed to get the kids. He, he's yep. going to turn them over to the evil master spirit, whatever thing. But then he actually, it's Skeletor becomes the hero. It's actually right. less so about He Man. Skeletor starts to actually realize that these kids deserve their Christmas and that he can't be, he can't rob them of that. He'll do evil things. Thank goodness they didn't catch, catch him on Flag Day because he would have killed them kids. Or Arbor Day. Arbor Day. But some Christmas, bitch hated trees. That's what it did to his face. <laughs> he gets the spirit of Christmas, and he goes against Hordak and the other guy, and he actually gives these. So it's actually somewhat famous, and it's on a bunch of those lists, like you say, it because is. it's one of the few times that you get to see Skeletor is not. I mean, and if you if you watch any of the He Man's lately, I mean, there is nobody that's more evil just to be evil than Skeletor, and this is the only special that ever gave him a reprieve from that well like, there were episodes where he did evil things just to be evil but he's funny evil yeah he's tongue-in-cheek evil whereas if you read the like if you do the like the toys that made us and you read the the comic that came with it is totally different than the filmation mm-hmm. show yeah 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 i mean he was he was creepy and yeah. and and he wanted that sword for whatnot and purposes. It, right. But no, and so that's basically the plot. It is it is almost a now redemption story for Skeletor. Yeah, I do too now, actually. Well, and I hadn't, you know, I, it was, I can't remember, but it was like, did I watch this as a kid? Did I not? I don't know. But that's you know, when I saw it, honestly, that I remember seeing it, it wasn't, I, I may have watched it in 85, though I doubt it. Joe, that but, didn't come out in the 60s. Um, but. What well, didn't come out in the 60s? In He-Man when you were a kid. Uh, uh, anyway. I'm on fire today. <laughs> yeah, I'm not putting you out either. Anyway, uh, um, <laughs> the uh, flaming stone. That Joe, once again, you'll do it better than I do. There used to be this uh, this collection of cartoons that aired on a certain United States of America network, Cartoon Express. Is that what you exactly. Want me to do? And they did a Christmas one, and it's also where I saw. And I'm not going to talk about. Did you just bypass me on my else's thunder? I'm not going. I hope I'm not still on Chad's thunder. No. But it's also the first time that I saw the Pac-Man Christmas special, where they redid There's all a the Pac-Man old Pac-Man Christmas special. You've never seen it. Makes no. no, dude. They have to go into the forest to find special Christmas power pellets. To I find must the get ghost. on the YouTubes now and figure this the hell out. And for some them... reason, Santa shows up because one but it I... doesn't have anything to do with them needing them Christmas power pellets. One that I'll talk about in a little while. You can't find anymore. All right, Chad, go. All right, so before I'm, he steals I'm... your next. No, no, I'm just no, I'm just I'm going to transition into my favorite, but at the same time. Or... At the same time, this is one that appears on several of the terrible lists. Shocker, it's my pick. Uh, and I didn't know that till today. But I had a lot of uh, – I Rankin and Bass, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of. I'm not. I don't like Rudolph. I never did. Um, I didn't like it till I was an adult. I don't remember actually watching it till I was Man, adult. Santa Claus was a dick. Yeah, they're, they're not, they're, none of them are very nice people. And you, they're, 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 that raises all kinds of – why can't Santa Claus control the reindeer and say, hey – Treat this kid with some respect. I don't because he's a d bag. Yeah, he just he just he, lets he, him because Santa why, Claus walks to, in and says, "This is your, you know, this is for winners." The, by the way, now Chad, you want me to you you have me? We need to get let's let's put this pitch out. Here's another pitch. These are all all you got to do is contact us. We'll work with you and write these. How about this, Chad? We try to do a Rankin and Bass style stop motion animation called a very mafioso christmas and what we do is we have santa show up now santa's got to be in a nice suit he can have the beard he can even have the hat but he's got to be in a nice suit he walks in he sees the birth of rudolph right he looks around and goes yeah listen this kid this kid's special you take care of this kid you don't take care of the kid maybe maybe i come back maybe you don't want that (laughs) maybe it's the bob maybe 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 that's something we need to think about maybe (laughs) maybe you know maybe his nose is red you know, better better red than dead, you know. In fact, you corn Cornelius was the only redeeming part about Rudolph. How about the Bumble? The Bumble no. was a bad guy. I agree. Bumble <laughs> and Yukon 
Yeah, but yeah, okay, I'll give it to you. I like but, the bumble, Chad. The bumble, yeah, I, the bumble stays. <laughs> by the way, no, the flip side of that. Wrist. Maybe the bumble is the enforcer in the mafia. The bu- bumble is Joe Pesci. Yeah, yeah. What? Yes. Why? I got teeth. You don't fucking what? What the fucking teeth? You making fun of my teeth? <laughs> By the way, uh, once again, though, and the only person I ever have, uh, I, I even when I was as a kid, I kind of decided I didn't like him, but I understood uh, Hermes or not Hermes. What's his name? Hermes is the one who wants to be a dentist. Okay, yes. it is. Yeah. It is. Okay. I, I understood him. Like, I understood that because I didn't know what I wanted to be. And I knew I couldn't work in a factory like my father did. So I was like, man, I mean, I don't want to be a dentist, but I get not, not wanting to make toys. I didn't want to make ball bearings. Anyway, you were saying so, Chad before so, James started talking about his. There, there like, was one. Balls. There was one Rankin and Bass uh, special that I connected with, and it was the Life and Adventures of Santa Claus from 1985. That and was I the last know. one they did, right? Yes, because that and, is the one that followed the Leprechaun's Christmas Gold, and it gets trashed. I didn't realize it got trashed on as much as it does. It shows you know up on why, uh, Chad. Uh, I don't know if you watched it recently. I've tried but it to removes every single bit of religion from the christmas holiday and doesn't it make him raised by vikings or something no fairies i'm sorry I'm yeah sorry, fairies uh Once no again, uh, well-known biblical fairies and if you're not familiar with the plot of the life and adventures of santa claus it's about this this uh, council of immortals uh who has been convened by the great act <laughs> not to be confused once again with hordak I'm yeah completely different. that's true yeah, and he looks like Gandalf wearing uh, deer horns. Um, but um, they they all convene in this forest, and the opening is actually, and it's a weird opening. It's the this person introducing each one of the immortals and then walking down these steps. Well, you know why it's weird? But and it wrote the book. And the anime. Oh, L. Frank Baum wrote wrote yeah. the book. Yeah. Um. I mean, I, yeah. I forgot to mention that. Thank you, Joe. Um. But the forest. Um. They all convene together to talk about. Has Santa done enough to to grant immortality? And it goes all about from him being found in the woods by a lioness, if I'm not mistaken, who then uh, pr- uh, gives him to off to these fairies to raise him, and then him, you know, slowly becoming Santa and building toys for kids. And some, of course, there's um, some crazy grumpy man who wants to wants to stop the toys from going to the kids. Blah 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 blah. But no, it's one of my favorites. I just had, I, I watched it on VHS constantly. I recorded it off TV. Honestly, I wish I still had that VHS tape. Um, Interesting enough, if you catch it on Freeform, it's heavily edited. Oh, really? Yep. Them and AMC have heavily edited it from its original CBS. Sorry, didn't mean to, but I was. No, I I've wonder never, if they cut I, out. I have no, no idea what you're talking about. And I was reading it and I don't know it. So I don't know oh, how wow. I've seen it. Yeah, no, it, 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 it I, I really did. We recorded it on VHS one night when it aired on TV and I just could not stop. Like I watched it even when it wasn't Christmas. I don't know why I was so intrigued with this. I love the creatures, the, the council of immortals, um, especially the wind God. He was really cool, but no, I mean, it, I just have a lot of fond memories of it and I don't know why it's bashed so badly. I mean, I know it's their last one. So, you know, they were pretty much on the decline at this point and the, and the stop motion animation. I'll be I'll be the first not not their best. Like there are several. Like for example, there's several where instead of walking, they just kind of hop. <laughs> they don't they don't take the time to do I the legs. Watch it. I've never seen it. Yeah. Um. You. I will say this: you can't find a continuous ep- a piece of it on YouTube. You can only watch segments of it, which is bizarre. It's the one thing I've never found on you. There's actually my 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 pick. I have two favorite holiday specials. Joe's going to pick one of them. I know he is um but um because we've no, talked you're... about some before i'm trying to do something different okay um but this one um it's one of those ones that i think has been forgotten just because people shit on it all the time mm. so if you haven't seen it check out the life and adventures or can you find it because i was just looking it's honestly hard. you can you can see a a a edit of it on youtube but that's about it, it looks like you can buy it on dvd oh really okay i didn't even look that up but I don't know if that's an edited version of it either. I just want to know what they cut out of it because I don't remember. Well, according know. to this, and I didn't know this either, Freeform has actually cut quite a bit of the Rankin and Bass ones that they show every season. 
Is it because they need to fit it into a time frame? I would imagine. I don't, yeah. I, I would imagine. Yeah, because there used to be less commercials. I mean, yeah. some of these date back to the 60s, right? So, well, yeah. yeah. And this was 50 minutes long in 85. They had a full hour on CBS for the premiere. Yeah. yeah. James, what do you got? We got James. I'm going to go with some, uh, I, and it's hard for me to talk about this one. So, if I'm going to veer a little bit, uh, but I'll start off with one. How about this? Um, just because I, they're doing a display right now of the puppets from it at the uh, at the the puppetry center in Atlanta, the museum down there. Yes, uh, Emmett Otter's Jug Band Christmas. <laughs> yeah, which I, you yeah. can find you can stream free on Amazon Prime if you have an Amazon Prime account. But and I, 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 I have it on years DVD. Ago, it didn't make it past the first ten or fifteen minutes, and I don't know if it, I just got bored. I don't know what, if well, it's near if I get old and I didn't like it. As a kid, I remember once sitting down to watch it, and it never really triggered with me. It never really, but as I've gotten older, and I wanted to pick it up because my kids like Muppets, um, and so I did. And then I've watched it once or twice since, and I was like, "No, I get it now." It's it's uh, it's hosted, quote unquote, by Kermit the Frog. He tells the story, and it originally aired on CBC, uh, December fourth, nineteen seventy seven. Then on HBO. December oh, 17th Canadian of the next thing. year. Mm. What now? It was Canadian. That figures. Uh, and then, uh, I got so nothing. HBO picked it up for the first American showing, and then ABC aired it on December 15th, 1980, and it's since got, got kind of a cult following. The, so the story, basically, it's a one-hour musical Christmas special. The songs are all written by uh, Paul Williams, who wrote uh, just an old-fashioned love song. And we've only just begun, but also uh, is famous for writing. What famous song from the Muppets is he famous for writing? All of them, all the good ones. All the good. <laughs> I agree with you. All of them except "Are You a the Man Rainbow. or a Muppet?" I yeah. like that one. I like that one. But uh, no, no, I. Agree oh, I, I also, I also like the other one. From Rainbow the Muppets. Connection. Isn't it Grant? Isn't it Grant? Um, isn't it great? Isn't it grand? I got the whole wide world in the palm of my hand. Oh, that one's good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah but no, um, but yeah, the Rainbow Connection. Rainbow Connection. It was playing on the video. radio the other day, and I actually, I could, I, I knew people were just staring because I had the windows down screaming. <laughs> the crew kept sure. I'm sorry. When, and I know it's us three, and we have that connection, but whenever the Rainbow Connection does play, y'all just catch yourself swaying back and forth. Going, <laughs> I don't know if oh, I was swaying. I was by what? myself and actually singing, singing. Oh, it's I will sing, but I'll start swaying as soon as, as soon as I hear that first little banjo. I'm just like, oh, man. By the way, that I, I watched. Uh, we I own the DVD and, and actually I own the old, old VHS tape of the Muppet Christmas Carol, the the which went to theater. So I don't want to talk about it right now. But I didn't realize the song that's been cut from it historically. Yeah. The the love song. I read an interview because Paul Williams did all the music for it, and they asked him about that song, and he goes, I, I he goes, I understand why it got cut. Because it's a very heavy song in the middle of what ultimately is a kids' movie, but he actually said it's, to him it's a very personal song. Is that the one Michael Caine sings? No, uh, the one between the woman and like the woman. Yeah, that, when love is gone. Uh, evident, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. That's the one yeah. I don't like either. <laughs> yeah. it does well, he, he tells the story, but and, and maybe it made me think because my dad always said that's the only thing wrong with this movie. And now, if you watch it on Disney Plus, it skips it. It's gone. Is Are it you really? serious? They cut it out. Why would I, they? Well, let me go back and tell you the story. Actually, they say no. You don't have to. <laughs> no, no. They say if you have the DVD, the old cut of the DVD is yeah. still in there because I've got it where it's still in the DVD. Because yeah. somebody's like, "Well, they cut it off the DVD." I'm like, "No, I've still got it." When they went back to do, I guess, the 20th anniversary or whatever it was DVD, they went back to the master and somebody had cut it out of the master to show on network television, and and they claim actually Brian Henson. You can read interviews with him. He claims that they gave him money to go back and try to find a cut that still had it in there because when they remastered it for Blu-ray, yeah, they didn't have it. And he said, "We have yet to find one that would be high enough quality for Blu-ray that they'll that without doing massive restoration." Wow. So if you watch, if you get a newer Blu-ray, 20th anniversary or whatever edition, or you watch it on Disney Plus, it like I was watching. I'm like, dude, they do. It like literally cuts to her saying, "You uh, you believed that once." And then the music kind of swells up, and then it cuts to uh, him saying, why must you show me this? And I was like, move, that's different. But anyway, the reason I wanted to bring that up has nothing to do with Emmett Otter, but Paul Williams said he that to him that's a very personal song because he wrote it about getting clean. 
It's about him finally trying to overcome his drug addiction. How many songs did he write about overcoming his drug addiction, though? Well, he said. I mean, that's what he was dealing with. A lot for two years. uh, the reason he said um, that was a big one was of all the people he lost because he put more emphasis on, like, that's why it's a person. He paralleled himself with Scrooge about all the people who cared about him that he drove away because he cared more about drugs than people. And he said it worked perfectly for Scrooge's love of money. Anyway, I back put to all my daughter. heart and soul into Little Enos because I was recovering from <laughs> I, you know, I love him, but he said something that I, I totally disagree with. Because he said making those movies was the most fun of his life, but watching them is some of the worst parts of his life. And yeah. I disagree because Smokey and the Bandit, the first one's a classic. Sorry, I just want to disagree with Paul Williams. Uh, but anyway, um, the story of Emmett Otter is it's about two impoverished otters. Uh, Ma, the mother otter, and, and Emmett, ergo Emmett Otter. And they don't have a lot of money, and basically it's an O. Henry story. He, uh, she sells his, except they sell each other stuff, but she sells his tools, hoping that she'll make enough money in this talent contest to not only buy his tools back, but actually give him a better Christmas. And he uses some of her clothing to do, uh, to make out, uh, outfits or something for this performance. And they both enter this contest. Um, and it's, so it's got, it does have a lot of heart, heart to it. They're both trying to do better for each other and they perform in this competition and spoiler alert, they don't win. <laughs> and, uh, and and they're walking home, and they both realize they've let each other down. And you're thinking, this is not a very good Christmas special. <laughs> and then they the, the mother says, you know, your medley that you performed with your band would go well because she performs a song on her own. And so um, she performs a song called Our World. He performs a song called Brothers. And they start to do a medley of it where they mesh it together. And spoiler alert again, it's overheard by one of the judges who said they lost. And he goes, I really like that. And he gives them a job working in a restaurant. It's still not a lot of money. It's still not fame and fortune, but it gives them a better life. I think the reason I didn't like it as a kid was I wanted the, I wanted the rainbow connection, right? I wanted it to end with the standard rich and famous contract from the Muppet movie, it does not. It ends with, okay, things are going to get better, but you're still going to have to work hard to get there. And so it's it's not linked to, I mean, it's most people don't view it as a pure Muppet movie because it's not about Kermit and the crew and all that stuff. He, Kermit hosts it and tells the story of it, but it is a big musical. It's got, uh, I, I think, about 12 songs in it that Paul Williams wrote for it in, in about an hour movie. So if you've never seen Emmett Otter, is it as much fun as, as the Muppets uh, or the Muppets Christmas Carol? No, but it is. It's something that as I got older, I realized what they were trying to do is say, yeah, there's there's not always going to be an easy success on Christmas. Not every. It's not quite Christmas junkie heavy, but it's got some weight to it. All right, now I'm going to open up a vein now. I'm having a hard time picking out my next one because I got a bunch of them here. But one of my favorite ones that I watched as a child actually came out in 1981. I didn't realize I thought it came out in the mid 80s. And you used to be able to watch it on YouTube. And I went to try to find it to at least show I could tell everybody where you could find it today. And honestly, I can't. You might be able to find a DVD of it. It's a chipmunk Christmas. Did you guys watch this a lot when you were growing up? I did. But honestly, Joe, I can't remember a thing about it. Well, like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Yeah, no, I watched, I watched Alvin got, and the Chipmunks like crazy when I was a kid. So well, I've the, got a, I've got a deep dark secret, Joe. What? I really hated Alvin and the Chipmunks. <gasps> it's okay. It's okay. I, I mean, I well, oddly would. enough, I would have watched a cartoon about the Witch Doctor. <laughs> well, oddly I enough, I would have. David, uh, Dave, whatever his name was, Seville. Yeah, Seville, Dave Seville. So to tell the story, Alvin has his favorite harmonica, ends up giving it to a boy that's really sick. Uh, meanwhile, Dave's booked Alvin and them to perform a harmonica solo goal at Carnegie Hall, and he doesn't have a harmonica, and he thinks he's – it's basically the bullshit of he's trying to do – he tried to do something right, and now David thinks he's a horrible human being, and he needs to get another harmonica, and it's this harmonica that he's always wanted that he ends up giving to a sick kid. But that's a quick, quick version of it. I just really liked it as a child. A few, few years ago, they showed it again on network television. I was really kind of shocked. And I'm not talking like it wasn't on Freeform or Cable. It was, I can't remember CBS or ABC, whichever one it was. 
but I still, you know, it's one of those like uh, Pluto's Christmas tree, which is one of my favorite yeah. Disney yeah. Uh, shorts. It's just one of those I could watch. Well, no, Pluto's Christmas tree is one of those I could watch on repeat. I just love it. It's probably not that good, but I think it's another one of those that people don't really, I don't really see. I don't see it playing on those AMC free form, whatever they are cable where they'll do two or three days of Christmas specials. Do you guys? Mm -mm. Of course they don't also do Pac-Man, which I've got to find now. And another Buy the ticket, take the ride. And just because I made that one really quick, uh, I've got a ton, but the other one that I miss is you guys remember the Hanna Barbera one where it was the Flintstones and everybody was in it. Christmas special. No, Anybody? Anybody? No, I know the, the Flintstones had their own one. They was had this, their own. Yeah, was it the Flintstones was variety weird, hour? It was, it, it was, was pretty historic. Hour. I'll look it up um, and get back to you because it's just off the top of my head and I hadn't had a chance to look it up. But yes, yeah. uh, the Chris, the Alvin and the Chris, Chris blah, 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 blah. And James, you're right. Those movies are awful. Well, I've only ever seen parts of one of them. I don't know. This third one may be fucking Citizen Kane. I have no clue. Um, there. So, so for my, so for my, pick, I was waiting. Did anybody see the third Elvin and Chipmunk film? Is no, I, I, I haven't seen any of them. I've seen them all. Now the third one, see Joe, he's gonna. Is that they Chip think, direct? They, they think, I don't. I thought wrecked. that was the second one. I don't know which one is the I think Citizen Kane of Elvin and Chipmunk. See, he, they find out they may get a a stepbrother, and they don't like him, so they're going to sabotage the wedding. But then at the end, they realize they start to like their brother, step uh, their possible future stepbrother. But then at the end, it turns out that Dave uh, once had a skateboarding contract and now does these movies for money. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jason Lee, keep cashing that check. All right, Chad. All right, so next to the one that me and that's actually probably my favorite Christmas special of all time. Uh, this is close to it. Um, and honestly, I thought it was under a different name this whole time. Uh, but I want to talk about the guy who directed it. Um, he's one of these amazing animation artists who I think has kind of been forgotten um, as times progress from the 80s. And his, his work is astounding. And it's Will Vinton. Name sounds familiar. And you will when I when I'm when I talk about him a, a, a little bit more. And Will Vinton, he did um, you know, he did the Noid from he also did um the uh Tang Lip guy. Uh he, he a lot of his work was in mascots uh from commercials from the 80s, mm -hmm. but he also did the California Raisins. Mm -hmm. And I thought this special was called the California Raisins Christmas special. It is not. It is called the Claymation Christmas Celebration. And I just looked it up the other day because somebody brought it up at work last week, Chad. I've actually never seen it from beginning to end. It's oh. on my computer to watch. I watch I, it. You know what I love about that? And the one thing yeah. that stuck in my memory from when I was a kid, the various ways they talk about wassailing. Wassailing. Yes. Because I remember waffling. waffling and because uh, the waffling one, I, for some reason as a kid, I thought that was hilarious. Here we come a waffle. Waffling, yes. And, and you know, uh, the problem with this is on YouTube, you can't find an actual complete version of the special. All you can find is the segments. And jo James, they have the waffling segment as one and they cut it down. And they only cut, they only show the waffling part. And then they cut out all the other stuff with the geese and everything else. There you go, Chad. It's on the dailymotion.com oh thank you i'm gonna i'm gonna watch that tomorrow then uh because uh but anyway so it the story about is it's it's will vinton and there is a california raisin segment in it which by the way is the best version of rudolph the red-nosed reindeer ever beside the point um they but it's, it's these two dinosaurs in this town talking about christmas and they keep cutting to segments and it's all different uh, segments and it's some of it's stop motion. And there is a beautiful animated segment of joy to the world that celebrates African-American uh, culture. You should see it. It does kind of like a, a an ink uh, melting um, animation style to where it melts into different pictures of African-Americans. It is beautiful. Um, and this, and their, their version of joy to the world is because Will Vinton did a lot with jazz and hip hop and, and it's weird coming from a big white guy with a handlebar mustache, but he did. <laughs> um, 
but you know, uh, just to talk about some of the segments, there's a segment with uh, the bells, uh, the bells in Notre Dame, and they're they're being conducted by Quasimodo, and the the bells each are hitting themselves with a hammer, and there's one goofy bell who doesn't have, who's just completely messing up the song, and it's an ongoing thing throughout the while like, Quasimodo is slowly going insane, and then there's um. Oh, I'm blanking. I'm blanking. I'm blanking. There's a great scene between what the, there's a great dance scene between walruses and penguins. And I could go on and on and on. I don't want to, because I actually want you to go and experience this, this special by your, for yourself. So uh, Joe, we might post that in the YouTube and the bonehead to that, to that special. If you haven't seen it, if you weren't um, a, a child of the eighties and, or if you were, and you got past this, you need to check it out. It is a beautiful, stunning Christmas special. And and Will Vinton, like I said, the man does not get credit for being a, a, an animation genius. That's all there is to it. He did he did he did animation in both uh, claymation and regular two D animation. It's just stunning. Um, that's all I want to say about that one. But if you haven't check out the claymation Christmas celebration. Hey, do you know what I got wrong? What's that? It was your life choices. Well, yeah, but past that, I mean, listen, it was you, you don't choose the smack, the smack chooses you. No, but you can if you have enough money. You it was Casper's, die. they all come over to Casper's at Hanna Barbera once. Sorry, I thought it Casper was, was Hanna Barbera. Yeah, yeah, damn, they did it and they're all over at Casper's. I don't know, I, that's what it looks like. I'm gonna Is go to Caveman there. I've got to go find this. I have it on VHS chat somewhere. It's one of the ones yeah, I did. I, agree with I, I, yeah. I did a huge dump. I did a huge dump. Yes. <laughs> got rid of a lot of VHS tapes about a year ago. But this is one if, I kept was this Christmas. If one. if I am not wished happy holidays by both Captain Caveman and Hong Kong Fooey, it ain't a Christmas special. I know the two best things that ever came out of Hanna Barbera: Hong Kong Fooey and Captain Caveman. And I want both of them to do a Christmas special. And I, uh, this is completely off topic, but we've been going off topic like crazy on this episode. We all three d- do not care for the new Scoob movie, correct? I haven't seen it yet. Okay. I thought it was awful. Yeah. It was I, as bad as the Adams Family new yeah. movie. Yeah. And building up to that, I knew Captain Caveman was in it. And I knew it was voiced by Tracy Morgan. That being said, when it got to him, I'm like, this kind of worked. It was the only part that worked. And I think it was honestly just because... Worked, yeah. I think it's only because I am a huge Captain Caveman fan. My son has now got. I want to see a Captain Caveman movie, and hated that. Didn't care for that movie, and likes almost all of those ones you can find on Netflix. Oh, oh really? Has he seen the Velma and Daphne meet in high school and solve a mystery? Oh man, that's terrible. Uh, oh, no, I haven't watched. I've, he's only my kids watched it. This and, one or that one? Honestly, I've thought they, they liked were better it. than that stupid shitty Scoob movie. I don't know. Uh, by the way, my kids liked it, and, and, and that's who it's aimed at. I know. I know nobody was sitting there <laughs> making the Velma and Daphne high school murder mystery movie and went, "What would James want?" <laughs> um, because if they, if 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 whoever you are did that and that was your goal, you fail. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah. No, I just wanted to say that there's there's. I haven't seen Scoob yet. Uh, I'll I'll see it at some point because my kids do love Scooby Doo. I just don't think he can live up to serious. And I mean this honestly, the sheer joy of of Scooby Doo meets Kiss. I don't think you can beat that. If you if you all haven't seen that, I'm not even being sarcastic. I had stupid fun watching that with my kids. Uh, anyway, are you going to go? Oh, is it me again? Yeah, yes. you again. I'm gonna I'm gonna go? stick with my theme. And this is why I think actually, Joe, you sent me the link to this when it was posted because it's not available. I'd buy this on DVD, but a Muppet Family Christmas. Yeah. And if you haven't seen a Muppet Family Christmas, it is the last time and the only time to the 88. Uh, it was 87, released 87. December 16th, 1987. It was nominated. I don't know if I know this guy for a 1988 Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Children's Program. And also won an award from the Writers Guild of America. It's got all how, the damn Muppets in it. It has every. It has Sesame every Street. Every damn Muppet. It has Fraggle Rock. Yep. And they managed to blend them all together. I'm sure but, I've seen it. It's not fantastic. I have no recollection of watching it as a child, yeah. but I found it on YouTube. Uh, um, the the it, it has a bunch of Christmas songs in it. All of them known Christmas songs. No original things in there. 
Um, but basically, the it opens with the the Muppet crew is supposed to be going to Fozzie's mother's country house, and you find out that Fozzie didn't let her know he was coming. He wanted to surprise her. Well, in a twist, and they start uh, they sing "We Need a Little Christmas" as they go. Well, Emily, uh, Fozzie's mother, has actually rented the house to this guy that's trying to get out of the city, and he wants time for him and his dog to be away from these these problems they're having. Something about these small creatures in the wall. It's Doc and Sprocket from Fraggle Rock. Mm-hmm. So they are surprised when all of a sudden all the Muppets show up. And then you also get uh, Sesame Street, Carolyn. And it, uh, they blend them all together. And one of the coolest parts about this holiday special, because it was the last one Jim Henson was involved in completely uh, before he passed away, is there is a scene in the movie where it cuts back to him being outside and he looks in at all of them together. And I'll be honest, as somebody that loves the Muppets, grew up with all of that stuff, I, I when I first saw this, and there's two cuts of it. There's a more modern cut where it was edited that's only about 40 minutes long. The full cut is 48. I think that's the one that Jim Henson is in. He's just walking by, by outside, and it's him literally seeing everything he created and how well they mesh as a family. Uh, But it also does some things where it points out how weird this is to begin with. Like there's Emily, uh, uh, Fozzie's mom does come back for Christmas. She decides not to go to Florida when she finds out they're all there. And uh, there's an entire line where she critiques all the Muppets. And she says, they're weirdos, son, but they're good weirdos. Yes, Chad. Is it bad? I'm listening to you, but at the same time, uh, I am playing uh, We Three Kings from the Claymation Celebration. <laughs> no, that's fine. You, you, you that is shocking. Yourself. I forgot how much I love this song. <laughs> One but of the cha- best, weirdest parts of this of, of the show is, of course, and you don't see this in modern Muppet stuff, is that the Swedish chef is trying to kill the turkey. And the turkey gets away. And he tries to, the turkey also tries to convince the Swedish chef that he's not actually a turkey. When in walks Big Bird, and the Swedish chef starts to prepare Big Bird to cook him. <laughs> By the way, James, why? Two questions. Where the camels are going. Two cha- <laughs> two questions for you all. Well, for you, James. Chet, we've lost I'm Chad. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, one. Why is Disney so shitty to the Muppets? Two. I don't man. That's a good question. I've questioned that myself. Two. Why is that the forgotten Muppet show? that particular that you is that i don't even know if that's available on dvd the one with uh the one that got introduced us to uh cliff the one with the the dreadlocks oh no 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 no. that particular that's the muppet to muppets tonight no i don't think that's even as forgotten as this you didn't even know about that why is that little christmas episode with the muppets for which is i mean which won well, awards? That's and, on YouTube. Well, here's, you know they don't give a history. shit because Guys, it's never been pulled from YouTube. But you got you got to remember, it has Sesame Street and now, the Fraggle Rock. Rock. They're owned by different people. Well, here's so, here's the history of home video Disney, release. And you know Disney has stated, you know this whole thing with Disney Plus right now, they won't release anything until they have all the rights. They may have the American rights. They won't enlist the little yep, uh, it's it's in America until they get all the rights so they're not going to put something out if they don't own it here's yeah. here's a here's the history of that joe i actually have it up because i want it's not to gonna take too this. long is it can i go back uh, to my camels yeah it should yeah go get, entertain yourself Jeff. so here's, here's it was door, released the, the edited form oh, was by oh. Home Video <laughs> in 1994 on vhs it was released again by columbia tristar when disney lost the muppets in 1998 on video it, it made a dvd debut in 2001 however now that it is owned by disney as a result of disney's acquisition of muppets in 2004 it has not been released on video since and disney has publicly stated as chad stated that in, since they do not own sesame street and fraggle rock they would need full permission for both the sesame workshop and the full Jim Henson company, because they own Fraggle Rock separately, to release it. And evidently, not everyone has came to the table on that. However... Because, yeah, I mean, Warner Brothers has the rights to air Sesame Street. Yep. Apple, TV, Apple TV owns Fraggle Rock. 
However, there have been some international releases of it, uh, including one in Portugal, where the Jim Henson Company was able to release it directly themselves. Hmm. But I agree. I don't know why it's not out there. And there, there's a tradition. This was a tradition of Muppet Special. I'm not going to talk about the other two, but you can find these on DVD. I have both of them. It's a very merry uh, Muppet Christmas mm-hmm. movie, which is the Kermit version of It's a Wonderful Life. Which I also, love that movie. Which, which Paul Williams, I almost said Paul Lynn also did the music for. I, do it, Chad. Do Paul Lynn. I don't think I can do him anymore. <laughs> no, hell, boys. What is it you were doing the other the, Oh, uh, boys. Boys. Rosebud. The, more, <laughs> the most recent one after was Disney. was a fucking re- sled. <laughs> after Disney reacquired the Muppets, they made a Muppet Christmas letters. Oh, Santa. don't try, don't step on that's the, the. Oh, is that's the one with Paul Williams's music? Paul Williams um, is in that, isn't it? Yes, yes. Which one? Uh, it he did letters Santa Claus Santa. is coming to town mm-hmm. and delivering Christmas is his original one. They're delivering Christmas. It's all about heart. I wish I could be Santa and my best Christmas yet. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, and that's on DVD as well. You can get that on DVD. So those latter two. Uh, a very merry Muppet Christmas and and letters uh, Muppets Christmas uh, letters to Santa. Both of them are readily available on DVD. Most of the time, quite frankly, five bucks or so will get them out of the value bin. Uh, but I would I would do wish they would do. And as as Chad said, I don't know why. I, I mean, there are enough Muppet fans to make money. They have and, just been shitty to the Muppets, in yeah, my opinion. But, they gave them one movie. They gave them more than one movie. I understand, but. They, that's the only and time I, I think. I, I, Go ahead. I rewatched Muppets Most Wanted, and I I still enjoy it. Is it? I mean, it doesn't it's have the manic movie. joy. It doesn't have the heart. It doesn't have the no, heart. No, it doesn't have the manic joy. But it is an entertaining film if you like the Muppets. Yeah. And and my wife just likes to wander around and Who's say, backing up? Are you the Muppets? It's usually me, but I wasn't doing it. Uh, my no. wife is making hot chocolate. Milk. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping he wasn't going to say my wife's backing up. Ah, she never <laughs> listens. <laughs> Just take that about the show, uh, whatever you say. The, I'm having a heart attack. The classic, the classic dad joke of my wife says I have two problems. One is that I don't listen, and the other, man. Anyway, so I guess we should probably be wrapping it up. Two of my last ones are going to be really weird. One's not weird. One is I actually enjoyed the Smurfs Christmas special. You guys the watched it lately? Flute? What? Isn't it like the magical flute or something like that? No. It's at Christmas. The Smurfs and Gargamel cross paths with two children and a stranger out to kidnap them. Can the magic of Christmas, Chad, prevail? Uh, I thought it is had a stranger to do with the flute Skeletor? Because <laughs> no, I think no, no. we were talking about I know the FYI, spoiler prevails. alert. The, the, the magic prevails. The magic prevails. Just letting you know. That's the story. Okay. I just enjoyed it as a kid. I enjoyed it as a kid one, too, but and the other one is something I cannot get out of my mind. Nobody's gonna see this come. It's not my favorite. I actually was saving uh well, I guess we can do our all time favorite at the end. I couldn't remember if we talked about this a couple of years ago or not. But <laughs> did you guys ever watch Evening Shade? No, I never actually I actually never watched the Burt Reynolds show. No, I mean I, the only episode I remember I is the one draw. episode where they reveal that his greatest <laughs> achievement it's, it's pissed upon itself. <laughs> the, the the only episode I remember man. was uh the episode where they showed that his greatest achievement, his game winning, whatever thing, and they, they're watching on a thing and they realize that he actually stepped out of bounds and he didn't actually achieve it. Yeah. Well, okay. So it was a really good show. I remember it. It's actually kind of hard to find now. It was it is. by Linda Bloodworth Thompson. You probably don't know who that is, but you know her shows. She created Designing Women and a few other things. Hearts of Fire. Um, A-Team. No, she didn't do that. She was, an, she was a writer on MASH, though. That's where she uh, some of her first credits come from. This and MacGyver. Cat- this show had some of the, one of the best casts of the 90s, and it ran four seasons. At Burt Reynolds as Wood Newton, who was an Arkansas high school coach who'd never won a game. Listen, it's Charles Durning, Mary Lou Henner, Hal Holbrook, Michael Jeter, Ozzy Davis, and this was the regulars, right? That's a lot. It also, it also had the guy from uh, Shawshank, and he was uh, Michael Jeter. My, oh, Michael, sorry. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I read it off. It's right. I'm here. half asleep. 
Michael Jeter. They have one of the greatest casts of all time. I would actually like to watch some of it. You can't really find them. They did a Christmas special that has been stuck in my mind for 20 some years. And it's in season one. And basically his kids are being really selfish and he gives away all their presents to the poor kids down the street or down the road or in town. And for some odd reason, you guys ever have something just like you and that Belvedere where you got touched and then you saw that special episode, James, you're like, shit, that happened to me. Only I was at grade school. No, that's never happened, but sure. James, had, <laughs> I want to do a line from... Uh, I bet you do, you drug. Yeah, no. Cocaine. <laughs> no, I wasn't thinking that. I wanted to do a line from a movie, from also a book, but... That's also anyway. cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would also like to do some cocaine. I did watch that Belushi documentary on Showtime. Highly recommend. Highly recommend. I'd like to see it. I don't. It is really to good. It. It's told. Uh, this is funny. Orally, over the phone with all the interviews, and then it's kind of has animation and other clips through it, so it's not just talking heads. It's really good. But I can't get that damn episode out of my mind. Twenty some years later, it's still stuck. Just want to let you know what's going on during the Iraq War too. How Holbrook is over in Iraq doing something, being a doctor while it's going on. So that's not, that's, it's not really my favorite, but it's one more I wanted to talk about. Hmm. Chad. So my favorite, and Joe, I mean, we, I think this is your favorite as well. Go ahead. Garfield Christmas special. It's, it's damn near perfection. Yeah. Garfield Christmas special is my favorite Christmas thing to watch. And, and you know, it's been a tradition ever since me and Joe have known each other when we celebrate Christmas that we watch it. That and uh, Mickey's Christmas special. Mickey's Christmas, Christmas, yeah. Well, it's it's Scrooge McDuck, but yeah, it's but that that and Garfield are my two favorite Christmas things of all time. Yeah, it, next to the clay, that and the claymation Christmas uh, celebration, those were my two favorite things as a kid, and the Garfield one has stayed with me. Uh, and it is, it is damn near perfect. Uh, um, the animation shit the yeah. they it really is if you watch the last the Halloween, I, my kids my kids got into it now he wouldn't yeah. but now he is so i've had to watch the halloween one about a half a dozen times i couldn't get the girls into the the, the, the halloween one we're gonna watch the christmas he, one tomorrow he's my son he likes spooky things so yeah. christy doesn't understand it and i keep telling him it's like it's not his fault yeah i had the same he just you're attracted to certain things so the animation shit but isn't it just good it's good, and, and you it know, has a heart to it. Yeah, and I don't. Want, I'm not gonna. I, I, this is one where I don't want to tell you all. If, and by the way, if you have, again, I swear to God, Amazon Prime, I, they should pay me. It's on Amazon Prime for free. If you have Amazon Prime, look up the Garfield specials. It's in there and watch it. The the the. It's also on Roku too. Roku's yeah. channel. It's free on there as well. The present that Garfield gives John's grandmother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get choked up. I still get choked up when when that happens. And even though I know what's going to happen, I know line for line what's going to happen. I still get a little misty eyed. It's just perfect. And even that opening sequence where he has the Christmas present machine. Yeah. Oh man, I mean, just the we could go on and on talking about the Garfield Christmas special, it's but it is my one. favorite. It is my favorite of all time. Yep, that and Mickey's Christmas Carol are my two favorites. But yeah. I really, really quick, it also has one of my favorite lines of all time that when I say it, there's only three people in this world who ever know what the fuck I'm saying when I say it. You two and my wife. Well, back in the day, all I <laughs> back in my day, all they had was wood burning cats. <laughs> yeah, I drop that cherry bomb sometimes myself. There's only three people mm. who know what the fuck I'm saying when I say that. But if you say that in a staff meeting. <laughs> Let me tell you, they're on the phone with PETA. They don't, they just look, they, the new ones are the ones that get freaked out, Chad. Yeah. The new ones, the ones who've been there five or six years, just ignore the shit out of me. <laughs> Back in my day, all we had was wood burning cats. Is the <laughs> funny shit doesn't even make sense. See, it's cracking me up now. <laughs> uh, pure joy. I do want to give a brief shout out to the the uh, animated show, the Real Ghostbusters, and their Christmas special. Where, but they, didn't we talk about that? We and, and that's why I'm not talking. Christmas Carol before, yeah, and I'm right? not, that's the and I'm not talking that. about it. Yeah, but no, no, I was just asking you. Did we talk about it? Before? Yeah, we talked about it, which is why I didn't bring it up. But yeah, yeah. where they actually capture the three ghosts, and yeah. then they have to uh, convince Scrooge that they're the ghost with a a viewfinder. <laughs> and they change. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've got, go ahead, James. 
I've got one more special I'd like to mention before we wrap up because it no. actually does mean mean something to me. Muting, Joe. Um, uh, it, it's know. actually one of the episodes or one of the things that I think is is very special. Uh, Mute me. Oh, see what I did. It. There? It. Uh, it gave me something that actually does mean a lot to me, so I, I want to mention it. Um, and it has a history also. So Bing Crosby's last holiday special was Bing Crosby's Merry Old Christmas. And you can watch the entire special, but the most famous part of it is, is actually one of my favorite Christmas carols is The Little Drummer Boy. Is this because and you were beaten as a child? No, no, it actually, I, I think it's because, I think the reason I like it and the reason I like it more the older I get is it's basically you give the best you've got and, and that has to be enough. star of bright um, joy yes. of surrender music. Oh, you know, I've never paid attention to the lyrics. Um, well, yeah, it's a little drummer boy. He I'm, I'm singing. Anything. I'm singing. We three kings. I know yeah. you are, but I, um, I, he, I've never paid attention to the lyrics. So he said she was a fast machine and kept her <laughs> motor clean. And yeah, that's was the that's best all in there. Damn woman that you've um, ever seen. Are you saying these fat bottom girls keep the rocking world go round, going around? But no, and, and so I, I do have a connection to that Not song. The, yeah. I think Bing, I've heard Bing Crosby perform it solo. Uh, and the story Live? behind this, Bing Crosby died right after, about five weeks after they filmed the special. It oh, see, I didn't air. know that. He died that's quick. Okay. He, he uh, And it had not aired yet. So and it was, him with some oranges. They thought, <laughs> they <laughs> thought that he was, uh, um, oh, family that it guy. was weird, that it was surreal that they got, that he wanted David Bowie or that they, they got David Bowie. And there's tons of different stories on how that happened. Nobody knows what's true. Like, there's some people that theorize that he even know who David Bowie was. Uh, but he said in an interview before he died, he goes, he's a great kid, clean cut kid. He's got a lot of talent, um, which I, David Bowie went on to do other stuff. If y'all have never heard Mick of him. Mick Jagger. Um, but the special does Just have one of the best out. performances. And the song was bootlegged for years. I didn't realize it wasn't released. You could only get it from that special so that it was bootlegged. Now it is available on DVDs. Uh, David Bowie's newest uh, re-release actually included it. Uh, but the version they do on there is called Peace on Earth, Little Drummer Boy. It's a medley because David Bowie didn't want to sing, do a duet. He, he said, I don't like uh, the Little Drummer Boy. I don't feel authentic singing it. So uh, Peace on Earth was written to merge with it. And it's, it's to me, I think it's a very, very interesting song. And of course, you've got Bing Crosby and David Bowie doing it. Um, so I wanted to mention that if you've never seen it, the entire uh, idea behind the show is that, especially that segment, is there is a butler. Uh, um, Bing Crosby plays the poor American relation who is visiting England, and he's he he's mistaken for the butler that keeps disappearing because the butler is always changing, and of course it's just because they didn't have a butler on there and all that stuff, but. Um, so it's it's a it, it's much like the Paul Lind Halloween special. It doesn't hold up to scrutiny, <laughs> but it is an interesting thing, and it gave us something that I think is special. I do think David Bowie. Get him, boys. <laughs> I just I, I it's one together. of those those special things. But you can watch this on YouTube. But I didn't know there was a whole long thing. I just always kind of assumed that was just the video. I didn't know it was an actual special. No, it's, it's part of But they're always kind of bullshit, God. aren't they? It's like, well, somebody just showed up. David Bowie. Yeah. Well, there's there's a great and and a, and a friend of mine from high school was a big fan of the band the Moody Blues, and uh, there was a there was a performance that they did that was taped, but it was supposed to be an open field, and and literally there's a scene in it that I think sums up every holiday special like that and all that stuff where he's like. I would play my drums, but I don't know where to find any. And they're in, it's supposed to be in this walking through this random open field. And he turns around and all of a sudden he goes, well, there's a set. <laughs> and I think that's the same. You have to oh. just go ahead. Like if it's not a, a scripted, you know, if it's just going to be musical performances and you're just trying to do enough connective tissue to get to them, those old holiday specials are all about the performances. And they just tried to string something together to mm. make it seem like a plot. What Eric Estrada's here, and he brought his ukulele. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you just have to have the. What's the uh, last? You know, one, what's the last one of those? Bill Murray's for Netflix. Actually, Man. there there is one that makes fun really of do them. them anymore. They're out of fashion. There's one that makes fun of them, and it's uh, 
Um, Phineas and Ferb. There's a Phineas and Ferb Christmas episode. And I know this because my kids watched it earlier this week. And I actually love what it does. They actually got Kelly Clarkson to do the voice. And they're making they're making their own holiday special. Did you just special. do that? <laughs> uh, they're making their own Did holiday do, 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 special. What? And they do this that entire was... thing where, you know, you're thinking, oh, they get Kelly Clarkson. So obviously they're going to have her sing. And they keep doing the cliche thing of, well, if you... If only we could have somebody sing. And she goes, oh, I'll, I can do it, I guess. And they go, no, no, no. It's your day off. Don't worry about it. So they had Kelly Clarkson do the voice, and she never sings the entire episode because they keep going, no, no, no. We don't want to make you work on your day yeah, off. Phineas and Ferb's actually not – it's pretty good. Oh, no, no. It's, it's of, of that, all the more modern animation. That, that one's pretty good. That one's pretty good. I know, I, I know. Uh, but to answer Joe's question, the only people that I know that still do something similar to that are, like, I want to say CMA, the some kind of country music organization does one, and I think Jennifer Nettles does it every year. The the, the lead singer of Sugarland. I, I know because no my wife made me is, watch it. Uh, is that isn't is that from Wreck It Ralph? No, <laughs> no, that's Sugar Rush. Uh, by yeah, the she, way, they always they always she she always comes out and then it's like, oh look, Patricia Yearwood's here, and oh she's going to sing Little Drummer Boy. I wonder if she's prepared. I, <laughs> you must. This is your wife, isn't it? Oh, yes. Yeah, okay. By the way, I, do you know who own, owns almost the record for having the most holiday specials in with his name attached? Bob Denver. Kenny Rogers. No. John Denver. John this Denver. actually shocked me, but it shouldn't. I'm going with Bob Denver. Yeah, my, Bob Denver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gil, I got charged on this island. it down home Christmas. Hey, Gilligan, um, would you like back, to suck on my lollipop? Back, <laughs> back to Garfield. Just an old, that was just an old fashioned Christmas down on the farm. And why was it Gilligan's Island? He had nothing to do with that shit. It should have been the Skipper's Island. He was or... a colonizer. <laughs> anyway, Perry Como. Perry um... Como had the most, starting in 1959. <laughs> Every time Perry you move Como's in that chair, Christmas it sounds like you're York. farting. I'm not farting. It's just squeaky. I, did, I got this I chair out of the was... trash. I can't imagine what's wrong with it. Hold on. The, then there was the Perry Como holiday special, and then there was Christmas at the Hollywood Palace. Now that only gets you to nineteen sixty nine. Then there was Perry Como's Christmas Winter Show that was seventy one, and then there's Perry Co the Perry Como Christmas Winter Show that was seventy two, seventy three. Get out! Hold then, on! Hold on! Hold on! Hold on! Let me do a quick three sixty. That Alf Hello uh, Halloween, <laughs> that Alf Christmas special with the dyed leukemia kid, and yeah. three Christy counted them. I missed two of them three Perry Como jokes in it. What This is why, because... And it's not timely, because no one knows who the no fuck is. Perry Como oh, No, is. you are wrong, Joe. Because no. let me finish. Perry Como's Christmas show, 74, and then Perry Como took the Christmas special on the road. Because in 74, or 75, sorry, Perry, Christmas, uh, Perry Como's Christmas in Mexico, 76, Perry Como's Christmas in Austria, 77, Perry Como's Old English Christmas, 1978 was Perry Como's early American. That's where he Christmas. got drunk and punched his mother. <laughs> Perry Como's Christmas in New Mexico. Perry Como's Christmas in the Holy Land. We are now tonight. That's where he got drunk and punched his grandmother. <laughs> oh no, Chad! Let me go ahead and make your head explode because 1981, Chad. If you were going to name a holiday special, what would you call your holiday special? <laughs> Wrong. It would have been Perry Como's French Canadian Christmas special. Uh, 82. Christmas in Paris, 83, Christmas in New York, 84, James. Christmas in London, 85, Christmas in Hawaii, 86, Christmas in San Antonio. By the way, let me skip ahead because when was Alf on the air? Alf. 86. Perry Como outlasted Alf. Perry Como's final Christmas special, at least on the list that I have in front of me, was a very special Perry Como's Irish Christmas in 1994. Yeah, yeah, Alf, had a, Alf had a show on TV Land for a while there. He Joe did a year. yearly I've Christmas special. I've never seen any special. of that, by the way. Neither I don't know if you can find He did a yearly Christmas special from 1959 to oh, 1994. I didn't name them all, Joe. You want me to start at the beginning? No. no I'd I'm going back to I'd... listening to the camels. No. no. Hey, there's a camel, there's <laughs> a a camel toe camel. on here. Oh, I, you wanted know, be, I, I wanted to be Joe Camel telling you just <laughs> smoke. 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 <laughs> That's talking camel. I swear to God, I never wanted a cigarette till this talking camel told me I needed it needed it bad. And this damn dog says I need to drink beer. Oh, the 80s. Oh, Spuds McKenzie, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Spuds. Right um, next to Slurms McKenzie. <laughs>
Hey, Look real, it up, you know, you know who does a holiday special? I, I'm, I was totally wrong. wrong, but they do them differently. Is Disney? Disney still does? Oh, no, 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 no. because they even have one. They even have a new one with Ryan Seacrest. We watched the other night. That was a sing along thing that was on Disney. Oh, that's. Oh, I need to see that. I want. Is that on Disney Plus now? Yeah, it's on. You Disney don't Plus. need to see it, do you? Oh no, my kids like them, so I need. To. I watch all the yeah. other sing along where they yeah. reunite the cast of High School Musical. I watched that one. With I the did kids. not, but he does like music. Your kids like music, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah mine's just. I'll probably end up watching. Um, no, you. But you mentioned, and actually, I was saying about Slurs McKenzie, Futurama's Christmas episodes. Oh, right? oh, that's a good one. That's. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna way, get you so, so many, many stink lizards. 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 <laughs> is a other line that only three. Actually, only you two. Uh, Christie's. I doesn't even understand that one. I'm gonna get you so oh, many stink lizards. So many stink lizards. <laughs> <laughs> that show. Uh, by the way, I've, I'm rewatching Futuro. I've rewatched it probably three times through, and I'm doing. I got four times on you, buddy. Beat that all I, the way it, through, even the new ones. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you guys are more man than me. I can't do. Uh, it. By the way, no, I, I literally, if I'm working on something, I just need background noise. Here's my rotation. Same here. Uh, Simpsons, and then if I get tired of that, I do Disenchantment because that's uh, quick to go through, and then I do Futuro. Matt, evidently, Matt Green. I play Hypno Toad on loop. That's because the hypnoto told you to. Yep. <laughs> because you missed that girl back at a, 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 that other place. <laughs> Seizures. Oh. <laughs> Got it. Seizures. Check. I saw a v, I saw a VHS fast forwarding on TV the other oh. day. <laughs> Actually, by the way, uh, we should point out you talked about you said Disney does it real quick. We have to give credit. I forgot. I don't know if it's aired yet or if it's already streaming or what. I don't know how this works. But there is a new Christmas special this year by somebody that has done three of them and evidently now does one every five years. Because Apple TV is giving us Mariah Carey's magical Christmas special. Oh, yeah. I just got no previously, Christmas is you. She, she previously did Mariah Carey's Merriest Christmas, which was on the Hallmark Channel. That was in between those, channel, uh, those uh, movies where the small town girl... Or the, I'm sorry, the big city girl goes to the small town, meets a plumber, falls in love. Falls in uh, love. Yeah. If I, in 2010, yeah, love, she did Merry Christmas to you on ABC. She I shows love. he shows her how to put a two by four in, if you know what I mean. Bing Crosby, right. by the way, before he did the last one. Uh, and by the way, they did do a tribute after Bing Crosby died. After he did Merry Old Christmas seventy eight, they did one called The Christmas Years, which was a retrospective. And, <laughs> sorry. But he did uh he did um, several of them himself, and uh, real quick, uh, one of the most famous ones is the first one, 1957, with Happy Holidays with Frank and Bing, which was Frank Sinatra with Bing Crosby, and that's a pretty big. See, Frank Good Sinatra one. to you kids were the Bieber of his day. I made everybody mad with that statement. I'll see you all in court. <laughs> You're not the first one to say it. All right. Anybody got any other ones? I'm, Andy Williams did a lot of Christmas. Holy Christmas. shit! No, let, let's 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 not talk about them. Let's just let's just wrap this show up. Yes. Like, so this has been our Christmas. I'm not for sure when this is coming out. You know, and and by the way, when you watch this show on YouTube or or SoundCloud or wherever you listen to your podcast, and you know they have that chat, they have that comment area. If we missed a Christmas special that really meant a lot to you, put it in there. Let us know what you think. Or if you, you think one of our decisions was stupid, let us know that as well. Yeah, if you need to tell us about your love of the Pink Panther in a Pink Christmas, you let us know. You want to tell us how missing out on Raggedy Ann and Andy and the great Santa Claus caper is a sin in the eyes of God, you just go ahead and yell at Chad. See oh, and by care. the way, Twas the Night Before Christmas with the Mice sucked. Don't put that in there. Uh, the Glow Friends Save Christmas? Never seen it. It's on this list. So you want to talk about, you want to tell me about Glow Friends? I don't know what they is. <laughs> this has been Bonehead where we're all wishing for a pink Christmas. I don't know. Pink, you know. I is mean, it's my... Audrey, but it didn't really come out that way. Yeah, pink, no, you failed. Uh, it's my favorite color. Pink, and worst off, you were, like you were scratching your we armpit on. while you were doing it, Joe. And I'm just for like... those watching YouTube, you know I wasn't scratching my armpit. It was my ass. So, pink, like ooh. the sheets that we lay on, pink Man. is like red but more mellow. Mm-hmm. All right, this has been Bonehead.
Uh-huh.